Hey guys, welcome to my video on Simultaneous Games and Nash Equilibrium. Uh, here's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about the beginnings of game theory. We're going to talk about players, strategies, and payoffs. We're going. I'm going to show you how to look at a simultaneous game like this one and determine the pure st strategy Nash Equilibria. And at the end of this video, I'm also going to give a couple of hints towards when there might be a mixed strategy. So, let's start by looking at this first game. Now, we will do some more complex games in the future, but there's a few things I want to point out here. One of them is that there are players, strategies, and payoffs. The players are identified in the game, right there. And that's just the people who are interacting. The strategies that they have to choose from are their menu of options. In this game, each player has two choices of things that they can do. And the payoffs are listed in here in this payoff matrix. So when I look at this, I see two players who are choosing either to collude in a marketplace or to compete in a marketplace. And I see that their payoffs depend on what the other person does. For instance, if player one colludes and player two colludes, then player one gets $1,000 and player two gets $1,000. If player one colludes and player two competes, player one gets ripped off and only gets $500, while player two gets $1,300, and so on. So how do we look at this and start to find what an equilibrium is? Well, first let's talk about what Nash Equilibrium is. Nash Equilibrium is a stable state in our game where all the different players are doing what makes them best off, what gives them the best payoff, given what everyone else is doing. No one can single-handedly make their situation better. Now, there can be more than one of these equilibria, uh, but it's a condition where no one can improve their situation without someone else changing also. So, how do we find it? Well, we're going to start by trying to find pure strategy Nash equilibria. These are the easy ones to see. What we're going to do is we're going to highlight the best responses for each player. Now, some books will do check marks, some books will underline. Uh, for the sake of me having an easy video, I'm going to highlight stuff. I'm going to highlight player one's best responses. If player two colludes, player one can either collude and get $1,000 or compete and get $1,300. If player two colludes, player one's best response is to compete. Okay, that is our best response to collusion. The strategy would be if player two colludes, we would compete. Now what if player two competes? We can either earn $500 by colluding or $600 by competing. 600 is better than 500. Our best response to, com to competing is also competing. Now, let's take a look at this, because this is a special situation that we call a dominant strategy. Dominant, well, I can't spell. Dominant strategy. And a dominant strategy is one where your best responses are the same no matter what the other player does. In this little game, I want to compete no matter what the other player does. If you collude, I should compete. If you compete, I should compete. Com competing is my dominant strategy. At the same time, I could say that colluding is a dominated strategy because there are no conditions under which I will ever pick to collude in this one stage game. Now, let's do something similar for player two. If player one colludes, player two can collude and get $1,000 or compete and get $1,300. Well, $1,300 is better if that's their best response. They're gonna, if, you, if we collude, they wanna compete. What if we compete? They can get five or six hundred dollars. Six hundred dollars better. Player two also has a dominant strategy of competing. Both players do. This is a very simple game. Uh, we'll do some messier ones in just a minute. Uh, player two also has a dominant strategy of competing. Now where do we find the Nash Equilibrium? The Nash Equilibrium is here where the best response functions overlap each other. So the Nash Equilibrium strategy 
is both players play compete. The Nash Equilibrium payoffs are $600 each. And there's your simple game. Uh, one last note, this is called a Prisoner's Dilemma. It's a very famous sort of game. In a Prisoner's Dilemma, uh, what we see is that both players have a dominant strategy that leads to an equilibrium. And this equilibrium has a lower payoff than if they both played the other strategy. Obviously, both players would rather see collude, collude happen. But if one player is colluding, my best response is still to compete. I'm never going to collude. At least not in a one-stage game. So, other notes about this. Uh, this is a simultaneous game, as I mentioned. That means that we're making the choice at the same time. I don't get to say, oh, you colluded, now I will compete. We both choose at once. Uh, we will do sequential games where we take turns making choices later. All right, let's do another game. It looks kind of similar, but let's see if it is. Uh, it's another compete collude game, but the payoffs have changed, which will change what their strategies are. If player two competes, player one wants to compete. If player two colludes, player one wants to compete. Okay. Uh, now, by the way, how did I choose those? A thousand was bigger than two hundred. So if we're in the compete column, a thousand's better. I want to compete. If we're in the collude column, two thousand's better than six hundred. I want to compete. So player one still has a dominant strategy because they want to choose the same thing no matter what. But let's look at player two. Player two. If player one competes, can choose compete or collude. Compete gives six hundred dollars, and collude gives two hundred dollars. Six hundred's better. But if player one colludes, player two's best response is also to collude. So this is another dominant strategy. In this case, player one still has a dominant strategy of competing. Uh, what about player two, though? Player two, if player one competes, can choose to compete or collude, competing is better. So they'll do that. If player one colludes, player two's best response, get 500 or 800, they want the 800. So player two's best response to us colluding would be to also collude. So player two does not have a dominant strategy. Why? Because their payoff, or sorry, their best response depends on what we do. If we compete, they wanna compete. If we collude, they wanna collude. Sometimes they wanna do one thing, sometimes they wanna do the other thing. Hence, there is no dominant strategy for player two. Their strategy just depends. Now where is the equilibrium? Hopefully you can see it. It's there. Where the two best responses overlap. If we're both competing, neither one of us has any incentive to change. Equilibrium strategies are compete and compete. Equilibrium payoffs are 1,000 and 600. All right, let's make this a little more complicated, shall we? What a nightmare, huh? All right, it's not as bad as you think. Let's look at it. Uh, I didn't make up a cutesy story or anything. I just gave them A, B, C, D, E, and A, B, C, D, E as their strategy choices. They each have five strategies to choose from, which means that there are 25 possible outcomes in this square. So let's just take a look and see what we can figure out. If player two chooses A, then player one has to choose A, B, C, D, or E and any of those payoffs. Which is the best one? The best one is if they play D, they get $21. If player two chooses B, I get to choose between these. My best payoff is if I play B in response and get $56. If player two chooses C, I have all those to choose from, and my best response is to play D and get $100. Player two chooses D, I want to play A and get $5. If player two chooses E, I want to play C and get $40. Now, obviously, there is no dominant strategy for player one. Sometimes I want to play A, sometimes I want to play B, sometimes I want to play C, sometimes I want to play D. What's interesting, though, is we do have a dominated strategy. Dominated. We will never play E. E is never the best response. Never once does player one think that playing E is the best idea. 
So a dominated strategy, we can actually ignore it because it's not really part of our game. Now, I'm not going to because that looks messy. I'm just going to leave it there. But just be aware, a dominated strategy is not going to get played. At least not in Nash Equilibrium. So, let's look at player two now. If player one chooses A, player two can choose between A, B, C, D, E. Which one gives the highest payoff? Well, I would be playing D. Hey, look, that's a Nash Equilibrium. Sweet. Uh, if player one chooses B, what's player two's best response? 0, 0, 5, 126, 100, 126. They want to play D. Let's see. Minus 11, minus 20, minus 15, minus 10, minus 20. Minus 10 is the least bad there. Look at that. I'm just going to skip ahead. Player 2 has a dominant, oops, has a dominant strategy. Now, anytime there's a dominant strategy for one of the two players, you're probably going to wind up only having one Nash Equilibrium, or at least only one pure strategy Nash Equilibrium. Why? Because player two, as a dominant strategy, is only ever going to play D. And there's only one best response to D from player two, and that's an A for player one. So there's that game. Uh, the Nash Equilibrium is, the Nash Equilibrium strategies are player one plays A and player two chooses D. The Nash Equilibrium payoffs are five and ten. Now, same game almost, I changed two of the cells. I changed the 126 to a 26, and I changed the 0 to a 10. Now, why did I do this? I wanted to highlight the idea that small changes in the payoffs can actually completely change our game. And this is our last game for this video, but I'll go fairly quickly on this one. Player 2's best response to A is D. Player 2's best response to B is D. Player 2's best response to C is D. Player 2's best response to D, now that I changed the payoff, is C. Player 2's best response to E is D. So one thing I notice is that Player 2 no longer has a dominant strategy, because sometimes they want C, it's not always D. Now, what about Player 1? Player 1's best response. If Player 2 does A, Player 1's best response is D. If player 2 does B, player 1's best response is B. If player 2 does C, player 1's best response is D. If player 2 chooses D, player 1's best response is A. If player 2 does E, player 1's best response is C. This game has two pure strategy Nash equilibria. Whoa, what's that mean? Well, it means that there's two equilibria your strategy ones. One where player one chooses A and player two chooses D for payoffs of five and ten. And one where player two chooses, player one chooses D and player two chooses C for payoffs of 110. Now, how do we know which one we're going to end up at? Well, we could end up at either one. I don't know. You'd have to build more into the game to be able to choose one or the other. Something else that's interesting is often when we get these situations where there's an even number of equilibria, there's a mixed strategy equilibrium also. For instance, player two knows that sometimes they want to play C, sometimes they want to play D. Player one knows sometimes they want to play A, sometimes they want to play D. But neither one of them knows what the other player's going to do. Like, if you chose D, I know I want to choose A. If you choose C, I know I want to choose D, but I don't know what you're going to choose. And so sometimes we'll have to do what's called a mixed strategy Nash Equilibrium, which is to randomize between these. Player one would randomize, sometimes choosing A, sometimes choosing D. Player two would randomize, sometimes choosing C, and sometimes choosing D. Now, later on, maybe I'll do a part two. I'm not doing this part for my intermediate micro class, but I will if I do industrial organization again. Uh, yeah, we'll calculate exact probabilities for what to assign to each. But for my intermediate class, we're not doing that. We're just saying there's also a mixed strategy where it randomizes between the two. And then one note about these mixed strategies versus pure strategies. Uh, in these static games, simultaneous choices, there's always an odd number of equilibria. Always, just so you know. Uh, anyway, I hope this was a helpful intro to you. We learned about the players, strategies, and payoffs, 
how to find pure strategy Nash, how to identify dominant and dominated strategies, and then I gave a little hint at the end to figure out something about mixed strategies. Uh, hope was helpful. If not, too bad, but thanks for watching, guys. Happy econing.